Memory cards for your camera. Which ones do you need and how many do you need? So they seem like pretty straightforward questions because when you bought your camera, you were probably told by the person selling it to you that you're gonna need some SD cards, micro SD cards, compact flash cards, CF cards, C fast cards. Depending on what your camera takes, they'll just say, oh, you need a card and they'll try and sell you one. It's really important you know what type of card. So not all cards are the same, even if they're the same make. So if you've got a SanDisk SD card here, another SanDisk, S SanDisk SD card here, they could be completely different based on like computer power. So whereas you get a laptop for 300 pounds and one for a thousand pounds, one's gonna have a lot more computational power. It's the same with the cards. So you don't just buy the cheapest one because it may not work with your camera. So basically what that means is when you set your camera to record a certain style, whether it's 1080p or 4K or 6K, that's gonna use a lot more power in the card itself. Then you think whether you're gonna shoot in 8-bit or 10-bit. 8-bit gives you 256 million colors. 10-bit gives you over a billion colors. So that's a lot more information again. Then you decide if you're gonna shoot at 100, 100 megabits per second, so you've got that much information, or 400 megabits per second, or even a terabyte per second, depending on what camera you've got. All of those things need faster cards the higher you put those numbers. So I'll give you a quick example. This is the Panasonic S1H. It will shoot anything from 1080p at 8-bit and 100 uh, megabits per second. So really low res, low, low um, kind of power hungry video. If I was using that camera for those specific settings, I could use the cheapest card for about £12, put it in and I could film all day long with that card. Subsequently, if I set this camera to, to say 6K or in this case, I'm going to give, give you a quick example. I'm going to set the camera to 4K at 400 megabits per second and I'm going to set it to 10 bit. So it's going to be the highest form of 4K that you can shoot. So if I turn the camera on, now, first of all, I'm going to use a slightly lesser card. So this is a more powerful card that I'm going to take out. But in there, I'm, I'm leaving a fairly cheap uh, card in there. So it's fairly cheap. So what I'm going to do is have that running. So we're currently on 4K 10 bit all intra 400 megabits per second. So it's the basically the Netflix quality of this camera. So I'm going to get the GoPro here. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to film it to see what happens. So there we go. So basically this is on one of the highest 4K settings this camera does, but I'm using a cheap card to actually record with. So let's get the GoPro recording. Let's see what happens. See how long we actually get before it runs out. Okay, so here we go. Let's turn on the camera. There we go. So it's recording now. Let's see how many seconds we get before that card actually runs out. Now you may do this test and you may get to 10, 15, 30, 40 seconds and think, okay, the card's fine, leave it running. But if you're doing something like a wedding or maybe a, a Guinness World Record, something that's really important that the camera keeps going, you may not notice that the camera after a while has switched off because the card isn't capable of capturing that kind of specific uh, setting. So then you're absolutely buggered. If you haven't got a second camera running or, or if you haven't been monitoring the camera, then you're going to be in real trouble. So let's just see, we're at 36 seconds at the moment, it's still going. So normally I'd think, okay, that's fine, that card works fine at, at this really high setting. Let's just uh, keep going, leave it running, go off and do something else, set some other cameras up and you'll be fine. There we go, 46 seconds and we've got recording was cancelled due to the limitation of the writing speed of the card. So let's turn the GoPro off and let's turn the camera off. So that's a big issue. If you'd have bought the wrong card for that camera, in fact, you might have bought the right card, a, a lower price card with uh, less kind of power, and you'd have been filming 10, 1080p all the time thinking, this is fantastic, completely forgetting what card you've got. Then you go to an event and you start shooting at 4K, and then you're absolutely scuppered because it will start turning off like that. So you've got to really think about what you're going to be filming at. So as a general bit of advice, I would actually say, if you've bought a powerful camera, but you don't think you're always going to use it on those big settings, just think about the highest power it will go and buy the appropriate card. So let's turn this right off. So the card I was using there was actually one of my favorites and I've used it to film. I've actually used this for, to film nonstop for 34 hours on the, one of the lowest settings of the camera. And it's just the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is a 256 gigabyte 
and it's what's called a V30. Now remember that, it's a V30 uh, memory card. Now, honestly, I love these. I use them in my drones at 4K, 5K. They run perfectly, even at 10 bit in the drone. So this, this will work on all of my cameras, but not on those super high settings. So it's perfect for everything else, even for normal 4K, it's absolutely brilliant. But as soon as I turn the megabits per second up, then it won't record anymore. It's too much for the buffer. Now this card is what's called an integral Ultima high endurance uh, SD card, and it's a V90 Mark II. So this is a V90, which means it's capable of recording a lot more data at the same speed as this card. So it will handle a lot more data and this is 128 gig, I can get a 256 gig or a one terabyte card, a bit more expensive, but this will run indefinitely at that higher speed. I'm not gonna bother recording it because you just have to take my word for it. That's why I've got that card, so I can run the camera on those higher frame rates, higher resolutions and everything like that. So it's important to think about the card you're buying and you don't always have to get SD cards. Like I say, this is a micro SD card in an SD card holder. So you can think about that as well because these can be used in your phones, in your drones, all that sort of stuff. So sometimes I just buy powerful micro SD cards knowing I can use them in my drones and in my big cameras like this. But for this camera, the best ones I use, it's got two SD card slots. So I, I use these sort of high powered cards. So if you were to buy a, a really good camera with really high rates and everything, then it's worth buying the best card for that camera. So you know that no matter what setting you use in the future, it's going to be able to record without stopping like that because that will be disastrous. So that's covered the, the kind of that side of things with bigger, more powerful cameras. Things like um, if I was looking at, uh, obviously we're talking about photography here. So if I was looking at a camera like the 5D Mark IV, this has got two slots. It's got an SD card slot and a compact flash card slot here. Now this one is a Lexar Professional 1066 times. Uh, so it's a super fast card, 256 gigabytes. That will do so many photos. I'm talking thousands, many, many, many thousands of photos on there at high resolution uh, with RAW as well as JPEGs. So again, you think about what are you gonna be using the camera for? So let's give you an example. You're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna go out and do some super long time lapses that are gonna take one photo every second for nine hours. I've done those myself. You end up with thousands of, cam uh, thousands of photos. If your memory card inside that slot isn't as uh, big as it should be or it needs to be, then it's gonna run out and it's gonna stop short and you won't get that time lapse. Now, because you've got two slots, generally the card will flip over to the next slot once the other one's full. So if you have got dual slots, always have two cards in there because it means it's redundancy. So if you were doing something like that and you went over, you're not just gonna to have to put a new card in. It will automatically switch over. And then if you wanted to, you could take the other card out, put another one in and go indefinitely forever as long as you've got enough battery power. So if your camera has two card slots, my biggest piece of advice is have two cards in there so it will switch over. And also if you're on holiday and you, you're taking loads and loads of photos, then obviously you have two cards in there. You haven't got to bother swapping any out. They should last for the whole holiday. Okay, so again, you look at the speed of the card related to the kind of photography you're going to be doing. So if you've got one of the latest cameras, say the, the Sony A9 Mark III, then that will take 120 raw photos every second. So first of all, you're going to be using up a lot of cards, a lot of memory by all of those photos. If you're shooting a sport or something, you're going to need a, uh, maybe a 128, 256 gigabyte card at least. But you've also got two slots again, so have both slots full. But also it's the power that needs so much computational power for that card. So if you put lesser cards in, you'll be taking the photos and then it will just slow down, become sluggish because the buffer won't be able to handle and the card won't be able to handle the amount of data that's being thrown at it. So you need to look at the camera, look at what it's gonna need and its highest setting. So again, let's say you bought that A9 Mark III and you're gonna be doing loads of sports photography. You would get the absolute fastest card you could with high uh, kind of capacity. So even look at something like a 512 gigabyte memory or a one terabyte, something like that, because you're gonna be firing off tons and tons and tons at really fast rates and at high resolution. Okay, so you need to think about what you're gonna be doing with that camera before you buy the memory card. But really, they're, they're getting cheaper as time goes on. So one of these micro SD cards now, I think the 256 gigabyte I can get for 22 pounds on Amazon when they have their deals. So that's nothing for a card like that. And I've got about eight of those. So they're really, really good. But if you are 
buying, like I said, just buy the biggest, best card you can get for your camera so you're never going to be disappointed because nothing worse than maybe going on holiday with your new camera and you think, I'm not going to be taking anything more than that kind of, I'm not going to be doing tons and tons of photos every second. I'm not going to be doing, you know, super high resolution. But then when you get there, something may happen when you think, oh, damn, I wish I had a faster card because then I, can, I could have got that shot. I could have done this, that. I would always just get the best card so you're covering all bases with whatever camera you get and just make sure you get the right one with the right capacity and the right computational power for your camera. Now just to finish off, when you've got cards like this and this and especially these tiny ones, they can get lost so easily and trying to find something to hold them all in is a real pain. I've, I've had boxes before, old battery boxes with them all rattling about in there and it's really not good because they can get damaged, they can get lost, they can fall out of the box. So I'm just going to give a real <laughs> shout out to this. I bought this, I think it was about £44 on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. But this is by a company called PGY Tech. So this is really tough. It's You can drop it. It's got loads of rubber on the outside. Sorry for the noise there <laughs> if it annoyed you. It's got a, a thing here you can have to tie to your belt or your rucksack or your camera bag. Um, really, really powerful. It's also waterproof to a certain degree. Um, and it holds all of your cards. So this this is just the best thing I've bought for my camera. I love my accessories. If you've seen my last videos before, you'll know I love my accessories. This is one of the best things I've bought. So basically this will hold your cards. You just pop this up and you can see there, I've got two memory cards, sorry, two SD cards that side with two phone uh, slots as well for your, your phone cards and a extraction pin for your phone. On this side, you've got two more SD slots and four micro SD card slots. So I can fit one, two, three, four SD cards in there, four micro SD cards and two phone uh, SIM cards with the pin. Not only that, it's also a card reader. So you can put the slots in there. There's a SD card slot and a micro SD card slot. And then if you pull this cable out here, it's a USB-C cable if I can get the blooming thing out. Okay, so there we go. So this is a USB-C cable. And all you do is put that into your laptop or your computer and then you put your cards into the slots there and you can read the cards straight onto your computer, offload them and then carry on again. So if you're going to buy anything this year, um, I would recommend that if you've got a birthday coming up or holidays or something, just recommend that someone buys you that because it'll be the best thing you get. It's solid. Like I say, it's waterproof. Um, you can drop it. It covers, covers all bases. So one of those is fantastic for all the cards you get. It only holds micro SD, SD, and that's it, that, those two cards. So if you do need something to hold your CF cards or your uh, CFast cards or anything like that that are bigger, then you're going to need something else. But generally, I always make sure the cameras I buy, because even this old 5D Mark IV will take micro SD cards in the second slot. So I can use those in here as well. OK, so look at the cameras you've got and decide what you need and then possibly buy one of those. But like I said, all of my cameras, the the, uh, the GH5, GH6, the S1H, the 5D Mark IV, and my drones all take SD cards, micro SD cards. So that's all I need. So that's perfect for me. That's kind of it. Also, the, the GoPro takes micro SD as well. So it's really great. So when I go out with all of my cameras on a wedding or something, I know all I need is micro SD cards because I can put them into that for SD as well. So I hope that helps. It's a lot of information, but just make sure you get the best card for your camera with the best capacity and computational power and make sure you've got enough of them to cover any kind of job that you're going to do, whether it's a holiday with your family or something for work. OK, thanks a lot. Appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next video.